Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Happy Sunday. This is Ishma Perez broadcasting from my house. Uh, hold on one second, everyone. Uh, one one second. I don't know if there's a way to. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, how's everyone doing out there? Happy Sunday. I am obviously not at the studio. I don't have the library behind me. And, um, you know, I am here at my house. Let me put on my glasses so that I could read. <laughs> read the chat. How's everyone doing out there? Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, does anybody know what live this is? Is it the 25th, 26th live? I don't know. I lost track. But in either case, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you, first and foremost, for all of your prayers regarding my son. My son came home that same night. I think that our collective prayer and meditation really um, allowed his blood sugar to go down enough so that he could you know, be discharged and uh, be at home. And he's doing great. Uh, actually, this morning, me and him had a workout this morning. He works out with me on the weekends. But lately, um, I'm going to try to get him to work out with me. Or at least to to uh, implement some sort of a you know um, frequent workout routine because I think exercise is good for diabetes. You know, um, not only eating healthy, drinking a lot of good water, but also uh, li living a life of fitness. You know, and, and just health in general. So I'm trying to get my son to work out with me um, as much as possible. But you know, because we do have conflicting schedules, I believe that he's going to try to do it on his own, and that's going to also be good. So. I just wanted to thank everybody out there for all the prayers um, out there. My, you know, he's doing a little better. Um, he's been home ever since you guys prayed for him. Now, I do want to cover some uh, important subjects that are important for us to know, especially at this time. And uh, the first one is the um, how, how do we distinguish? How do we distinguish the uh, the divine genetic programs? Hold on one second. I'm trying to. Let's see. What if we bring, I'm trying to bring this camera up a little bit more like this. <laughs> then you guys are going to see my messy, my messing uh, room here. But I want to distinguish between um, the difference between the divine programs, the divine genetic programs that are part of the divine plan, right? And the development of the angelic orphan race to those programs that are not part of the divine plan. Those programs that are being executed by certain inter interstellar races that are not a, in alignment with, um, you know, with with God, with Source, with with the All Creator, the Creator of all. So there are apparently there are different programs out there, guys, that are competing. Okay, they're all competing with one another. And uh, let's just start with the original program. The original program was set into motion about 560 million years ago. Um, when the earth was still part of the second harmonic universe, right? Our original ancestors were made um, by a group of different races that came from all over the universe that contributed that contributed their DNA to make the 12th strand uh, Terranusian DNA uh, hominid, which is the human angel. Um, we were super advanced, uh, very connected to source, um, very telepathic, um, in a way, compared to what we are now, we were considered a super race in our original makeup, guys. Okay, um, several attempts to again distort or downgrade that race were were implemented by certain factions that were not in alignment with the original plan, and so there were many attempts to to downgrade the original uh, twelve strand DNA orphim angelic human, right? And so. What ended up happening was um, the original program, as I mentioned in some of my lectures and talks, was a solution, um, was designed for multiple things. First and foremost was the, you know, supposed to be the, the you could say the completion of all the Adamic races put into one spot, right? So that we could, so that 
the, the earth can not only be a living library, but all, that houses all the flora, fauna, and, you know, genetics from across the universe or seedings, but also all the genetics from the different Adamic celestial human races put into one spot uh, in order to create a very diverse race that uh, would have the ability to house an oversoul, an oversoul in a body. And, and if you recall, in a couple of lives back, uh, I think it was during last week's live, I talked about how uh, the oversoul is really <laughs> is what we are in the 12th dimension. That's what we that's so that's part that was part of the original experiment, guys, is to create a certain body that was going to be able to house the consciousness of a 12 dimensional being who operates from the level of liquid matter. Right. Uh, oh, my God. We hold on one second. My fan here just stopped. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, one second. I, we, I just got this fan and it's not working. Okay, there it is. It's starting to work. So the whole purpose of creating us, right, the 12-strand uh, DNA Terranusian race, was to create a vessel, a vessel that was incorporated with the God Source gene uh, in order to house an oversoul that was... I keep having um, difficulties with my fan here. Every time it stops, I start sweating. Hold on one second. There we go. Hold on, guys. I'm fixing my little fan here. I, I have a little fan. It's about this big. It's very suitable for my... Oh, my God. It's not working. It keeps coming off. Hold on one second. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that works. Um, so what I was saying is that the original um, design... All right. I'm just not going to mess with it. I'm just going to sweat. <laughs> The original design was to create an avatar that was going to be able to house a 12 dimensional consciousness while maintaining physical form as we go into the realms of eternity. And I think I've touched on this in prior presentations. And so the second reason, of course, was to create a solution, right, by the different, you know, uh, members of different of many multiple universes that exist within the um, segment of or the periphery of the seven super universe to create a warrior race, a guardian race. That would um, be powerful enough to defeat the AI God and all of its minions. So that was the second um, reason and significance as to why the 12 strand DNA Terranusian race was um, created. And aside from the original uh, creation of the Terranusian race, guys, our ancestors. Um, so technically... Um, we were designed by many, many universes. Okay, guys, we are the ultimate masterpiece, the ultimate amalgamation of all the different uh, Adamic celestial races that come from, you know, all over the multiverse, uh, which within the periphery structure of the seventh super universe. Now, there were several attempts to digress us from the original uh, creation or the original design. Uh, the last attempt was, of course, when the Draco, in the form of Dramin, right, who seduced Anu, was able to uh, trick Anu into having intercourse with her in order to give birth to Enki Ia, right? Enki was the last attempt to completely digress the original angelic immortal race, okay? The angelic 12-strand um, Terranesian race. So uh, with along with that, uh, there were other interstellar races besides Enki and the Draconians that for various reasons, um, we're trying to harvest our original genetics in order uh, to save their dying race because they've, you know, kind of messed up in the past and we're losing their connection to God. OK, so a lot of these races, all right, are trying to save their race. And in some cases, uh, they also want to create their own version of what it would be considered human 3.0 superhuman. So their own version of superhuman, um, but with a little bit, uh, you know, differentiated genetics, like by tweaking the different angelic genetics. OK, so this is where the problem comes in, guys. OK, so we have about 22 different programs, 22 different programs that are competing with one another. And it's only two of those programs that were um, implemented by the benevolent, right? The, you know, the good guys 
in service to the one infinite creator. And all the other programs are just um, attempts to eventually create their own version of human 3.0 because they know that the time is going to come uh, due to this great solar flash that our dormant DNA will be activating. And when it does, you know, we're going to be having amazing abilities. So they're trying to create their own super soldiers, in other words. OK, so these other genetic programs, which have, by the way, have been uh, recently in the last few years disbanded by the Galactic Alliance. Um, there was there was a you could say a a a cleansing of these genetic farmer programs. OK, because that's what they are. They're genetic programs that have been executed by different farmer races uh, coming from multiple reasons, okay? Uh, to give you an example, okay, the Zetas. The Zetas are a big part of some of these um, non-divine genetic programs, okay? So who are the Zetas? Well, the Zetas come from the star system of Zeta Reticula 1 and Zeta Reticula 2, uh, commonly known as the Rambola system. Well, they used to exist on a planet uh, which is parallel to our universe in a parallel alternative universe known as uh, planet um, Apaxiola Laua, Apaxi Apaxiona Laua. Okay, so Apaxiona Laua, what ended up happening in that planet is that they were kind of tampering with, um, kind of like what our scientists are doing in CERN, you know, at the uh, tampering with these subatomic particles and the splitting of particles in order to uh, try to derive with, uh, to, you know, the, the beginning of the Big Bang, whatever. Um, but what we really, you know, what they're really doing is they're trying to open up dimensional uh, rifts uh, into other alternative universes. But so what they did is they were doing the same thing that our scientists were doing in CERN. And they ended up um, accidentally creating a black hole in their in their time matrix. So they started losing. They started uh, all of uh, all of the energy within their time matrix was being sucked in by this black hole. And so they're. Their planet, their planet was also um, being sucked in by the black hole. So to the point where they lost their home world, they lost their their home world, which was known as uh, Paxiona Lao. So when the Paxiona Lao was completely uh, devoured by this black hole, what the Zetas did is they jumped time matrices into our multiverse, into our time matrix, and they stationed themselves in the Rombola system on Zeta Reticula 1 and 2, and then they've been kind of trying to conduct their own genetic experiments uh, by harvesting our own uh, angelic DNA in order to create, you know, future versions or a hybrid, um, a, a liaison between their species and our species. Because, because their ultimate agenda, guys, is to terraform our planet or not terraform, I'm sorry, but to take over our planet. So the Zetas, uh, the majority of them, not all of them, because some of them have defected from the dark and are in the light, but the majority of them are actually working um, for the dark side. You know, they're trying to pretty much create a hybrid race that will ultimately uh, replace the current human race on the earth. And that's not going to happen because God, God's plan is overall, you know, God's plan is ultimate. So um, I am sweating like a dog, as you guys can see. <laughs> you know, I, I bought this fan, but uh, it, it just it stopped working on me. Maybe I'm just going to get a bigger fan next time. I don't know what happened. I, I've used it a couple of times on some of my lives. I mean, on some of my interviews and it worked just fine. But now it's like it's not even working anymore. OK. All right. So I got it to work. I just turned it back on. Um, sorry for the sweat. <laughs> yeah, it is a hot one here in California. All right, so I did notice that some donations came in. So I'm going to go ahead and, and address those first before I get to the chat and the questions. So, yes, guys, you know, there are uh, certain aliens, uh, interstellar beings that are not in favor of the original genetic programs that are creating their own versions of uh, human th uh, 3.0. And uh, perhaps this is uh, another reason why in the future, after the millennium, um, you know, there's going to be one final clash against those uh superhumans that are currently being developed right now through the uh, non-divine genetic human programs. But luckily, as of 2018, 19, I'm sorry, around that time, that's when the um, 22 different programs were disbanded um, and by the Galactic Alliance that were conducting experiments here in our solar system and have been, you know, for, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Okay, this fan keeps turning on. This is such a distraction. 
It's so hot, though. Without this fan, I'm just going to be drenched in sweat, guys. I'm just going to see if I could turn it on one last time. I think those Zetas are interrupting my live here, huh? <laughs> no way, it's not working. All right, so, okay, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the questions. So, yes, in the end, guys, uh, one last battle. The last battle is not going to be um, with involving humans uh, that are our, our level of human 2.0 homo sapiens sapiens. It's going to be a war of X-Men. It's going to be the a straight out war between meta humans, cyborgs, AI and everything that was not part of the original program. So that's why we have to stay pure in our um, in our, you know, spiritual awakening and in, in our acceleration of the activation of our dormant DNA. All right. So um, I just wanted to thank Pretty Kitty. Thank you for the uh, donation. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And also want to thank Elizabeth. Elizabeth uh, Hutchinson. Thank you so much for the donation. And you do have a question, sister. Okay. So your question is, hello, brother. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. What is your understanding of the, of the Garden of Eden? Who created Adam and Eve, and who was the snake in the garden? Thank you. That's a very good question. Okay, so if you're if you want to approach it from the Sumerian tablets, which were, you know, pretty much contaminated, corrupted, and inverted, okay, by the lineage of Anki and Marduk, um, it the Garden of Eden was was what they called the you know Mesopotamia. You know, when they came four hundred fifty thousand years ago. Um, apparently, according to the Sumerian tablets, that's when, you know, they were able to modify the already existing hominy. But get this, according to some other records, what Enki and his people did, right, the fallen Anunnaki, uh, or those that were infested with draconian genetics, right, due to his mother being Draman, uh, what they did is they, they took an already existing 12-strand uh, DNA angelic superior race that was already here during the days of Atlantis and they had mixed or they added genetics of primitives in order to downstep the original human angelics and, and, and create a slave race. Okay. So if you want to go back to the original garden of Eden, that actually took place 560 million years ago on earth Terra, when this planet was still existing in harmonic universe two, uh, on the fifth dimension. Okay, so the original Garden of Eden, um, where our ancestors lived in harmony and and never died, and really they were like an immortal race, goes back to 560 million years ago. Okay, the Anunnaki have only been in the scene for less than a million years, for half of a million years. Before that, guys, um, you know there there was an already advanced angelic uh, immortal race that existed on this planet. Okay. And those were who our real ancestors are. So to answer your question, yes, the original Garden of Eden goes back to 560 million years ago. And it existed in peace and in, and in harmony and in balance for millions of years before the first attempt. Okay, So it, it turns out that about 5 million years ago, even before the Anunnaki, we had another incident where the fallen uh, interstellar races, right, fallen celestials that were not in alignment with the divine plan, tried to what? to digress, try to corrupt uh, the angelic, the angelic humans. Okay. So there were many attempts to try to corrupt the angelic humans before Anki did it. And so what ended up happening 5 million years ago was an advanced race from the central universe, which is equivalent to harmonic universe number five, I'm sorry, four existing in dimensions, 10, 11, and 12, uh, known as the Branu race, the Branu race, which actually stepped down from harmonic universe five had to step in, um, Upon the Syrian request, because at that point, the Lemurians and the Syrians and the Pleiades from Alcyon uh, were were petitioning, uh, you know, the always existing race from the central universe to step in. And so that resulted in a in what, the, what in history was called the 1000 years war of the electrical wars and the electrical wars were fought to, to control the time matrix here in our in our, you know, version of the universe. So hopefully that answered your question. 
All right, so Tristan Early, thank you, brother, for the donation. You do have a question. Five million med beds worldwide awaiting funding. Um, okay, uh, yeah, to answer your question, the med beds are real, and they're only going to exist within the fourth dimensional Earth, and they're going to be for free. No one's going to be – this insurance, none of that stuff is going to exist in the, in, in the new Earth, whether you're in the fourth or fifth dimension. All right, uh, let's see. See if I can get this fan to work one last time. Otherwise, by the end of this chat, I'm going to be soaking wet. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It turns on, and then, and then it'll uh, be on for like 20 seconds, and then it turns back off. All right, so I, I do have the fan on again. Awesome. So let's answer some of these questions. I just wanted to thank everyone for being here again. I'm sorry I'm not in my professional studio. Um, I, I do like the beginning of our chats, of the lives, you know, when I am at the studio. That's that's really cool. But uh, I don't I don't have any of that additional stuff today. So I'm just here. I'm raw in the flesh. <laughs> no script or anything, guys. This is me raw. <laughs> oh, I like this. Hello, Ishmael. Daniel Daniel Benson says. All right, Daniel Benson says. Oh, I'm trying to read your question. Do we all have twin flames on the new earth? So that if we never got to be with someone, can we be on the new earth? So, if, okay, so I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. I am not an expert in twin flame um, knowledge. And I, I will, you know, be when it comes to certain things that I don't know about, like if I can't answer a question, I'll be honest about it. If I don't know, I don't know. All right. Uh, so about the twin flames in the new earth, um, using common sense, I would assume that if you don't have your partner here, uh, it's because your twin flame did not incarnate. And therefore, you will reunite with your twin flame on the new earth. Yes, most definitely. But again, you know, I, I am not a twin flame expert. I never really had a chance to study that. All right. Let's see. Thank you, Ricky Lee. <laughs> Jedi fun. Thank you so much. Wow. What would I say? This is probably perhaps the hottest day ever in summer here in California. Look at me. I I I never look at this. This is all sweat, guys. I wasn't sweating like this when I first jumped on. Um, it is truly hot here in Southern California. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So Tony Lopez wants to know if I have an update on the Great Solar Flash and Ascension. I've heard 9/11, 9/23, and any time here in September. So any new updates? Thank you, brother. Okay, Tony Lopez, uh, to answer your question, um, we are at the finish line. You know, um, I'm not saying for sure this, what's coming mid-September, perhaps around the 20th. You know, 20th something is going to be the great solar flash, but we need to prepare in case it is. You know. Um, for anything in general, we always have to be prepared. And it's not just about being prepared with food and water for two weeks, guys, and a power generator. But it's also being prepared mentally, spiritually, right? And, of course, uh, emotionally, all right? Emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Are you mentally prepared, guys, to be transformed in the events that that is the great solar flash? All right, so any new, any new updates? Um, the updates are that... Okay, so I guess right now the only thing that the galaxies, galactics want me to let you guys know is that God is in control and everything in divine timing, okay? We have control over the timeline war. We've already pinned the dark side on every probability. They've already lost every possible future outcome, okay? Um, we have the brand new race, the central race of the central universe, by the way, whose ships are here in the numbers and I believe last week I did mention that there are sightings of huge motherships parked around the side, uh, parked around the sun and around the sun in, in, in a shape of a of a U. Those are coming from the central universe, guys. Okay, and it is it has been prophesied that when all 
the focus and attention from the multiverses here in our solar system at this time, that means that, you know, any day, any day could be that great, you know, shift, shift of ages into the new world. So we have to be ready. We have to be ready. All right, so um, I'm trying to read a question, but they're going so fast. <laughs> there's uh, there's actually a lot of great questions here today, guys. You guys really want to pick my brain, huh? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nick. Nick, gosh. Thank you, Nick. Gosh. Appreciate the number one and the donation, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. All right. So somebody says, speak on the Emerald Order. If you want to know about the Emerald Order. OK, so, you know, there's there's a lot of sources out there, guys that I've stumbled upon that are, that have very similar information that I've pretty much that have voted over the years. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Lisa Renee, Lisa Renee, I think her website is called energetic synthesis gives a very good detail on who the Emerald order is. And then just recently I've discovered um, Ashayana Dean and Ashayana D uh, who hasn't been around since, you know, 15, 20 years. I think she was around in the 90s. Uh, she gave some detailed information on the Emerald Order. It's just f fantastic how a lot of my information that I got downloaded corresponds to a lot of the work that Lisa Renee has been put, you know, that has been putting out, and a lot of the a lot of the information that um, what's her name, uh, Ashiana D has also been putting out since the 1990s. So I think that we are all part of the same uh, cosmic alliance here. <laughs> But uh, in a nutshell, the Emerald Order is the is the collaboration of all the forces of light that are working together in pursuant of the covenant and seal of Palador, which was signed by the central race, the Branus, the Azurites. The Azurites were the original human seraphim before the, the 12 strand DNA orphan, which is what we are now or what we were. But, you know, it is in our genes ready to activate again. Right. That dormant DNA. Um, of course, uh, the Pleiades, um, the Lemurians, and a few other races. Okay, so that's what created the uh, seal and covenant of Palador. Uh, it's also known as the Office of the Christ, and within our universe, it's actually anchored in Sirius B. That's where the Office of the Christ uh, hails from within our local universe. Okay, let's get to some questions here. Thank you. Uh, is it Ko? Koa Tran, thank you so much for the uh, donation and the little cartoon character. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I guess this uh, six dollar fan wasn't worth it, guys. It's not working. It keeps turning back off. Oh, so you okay? So. My brother El Salvador wants to know if the Emerald Order is present on Earth. Absolutely. What do you think you guys are? You guys are all volunteer souls that are um, working for the Emerald Order. Every single one of you guys, whether you know it or not, took an oath before incarnating at this time. You guys all took an oath to come here and be like a system buster and really just work the matrix from within, right? The inverted system. And through our own frequency, right, through our mere existence and the works that we do, every single one of you guys has a gift and a talent. We break the system from within, right? We break this, you know, matrix, and, and therefore we bring the earth back into the original, you know, fifth dimensional existence. Okay, guys? So every single one of you guys is part of the Emerald Order. So, yes, um, the most powerful guardians that are associated with the Emerald Order are here at this time in physical form. And I did mention this in my last live, and I'll mention it again. 
that a few members of the Brownie race, a total of 13 individuals are also here at this time. So some of you are brand new. Some of you guys are part of the central race. That means that you came from, from dimensions 14, 15, and 16, okay? All right, so here's another question from uh, Pretty Kitty. Thank you for the donation, sister. You want to know, are RH negative blood type people Describe descended from reptilians are no, no, no. That's it's actually uh, the other way around. Hold on one second. Let me <laughs> this fan keeps uh interrupting. <laughs> if you could only stay on, fan that would be greatly appreciated. Come on, stay on. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, I'm just okay. Fine, you don't want to work, you don't want to work. I'm talking to my fan here, guys. That's how. <laughs> You know, the serious this is. All right. So um, to answer your question, no, the reptilians are not of the. OK, so this is the thing. The reptilians have a different blood type. OK, uh, even though they are off world entities, they 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 do have their own RH negative blood type. But for those that are not part of the cabal uh, networks of the Luciferian uh, secret societies are obviously and that are RH negative are obviously from the lineage of the seraphim. You guys are descendants from the original angelic humans. Um, and that means that all you are is just those, you are those people that pretty much were able to inherit a pure genetic strain without the, mus the monkey rhesus protein, okay? So there is no link, okay? There is, uh, those are two different things. Reptilian bloodline and RH negative are two different things, guys. In fact, the if you, if you want to get technical, the O negative universal donor blood, which is the blood that everyone could take, is actually is actually the most purest out of the, all the celestial genetics. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now the sweat's going into my eyes. <laughs> That's not a good thing. So to answer your question, no, they're two different things. Okay, if you're Rh negative, uh, be grateful that you are, you know. A descendant of the original Orphine race, and that somehow you didn't inherit the primitive, primitive gene that Anki installed in about eighty-five percent of the population. You guys could thank Anki for that, right? And trying to down downgrade the the already existing intelligent uh, group of, of humans that existed in ancient times. All right, so Mass Awakening wants to know. Thank you for the uh, donation. Thank you, thank you. Mass Awakening asks, Ishmael, are any star seats going to be left in the Mark of the Beast timeline as warriors for God to save people? Can we stop it before? Okay, so that's a very good question. Okay, so in when the bifurcation of timeline takes place, all right, <clears throat> some of us, if you want, by will, you're going to have the ability to uh, tra to trans transmigrate right from one timeline to the next so from the new earth positive timeline you're going to be able to jump into the alternative um ai dystopia timeline and act as heroes if you want okay and then of course pat pop back in into the positive timeline where there is no ai and there is no cyborgs so by will and by choice some of you guys right especially if you have some sort of an attachment to certain people that were unfortunately duped into the technocratic dystopia timeline, uh, you will have the ability to uh, jump from one parallel earth to the other parallel earth as soon as they split. Fully activated with all of your dormant DNA on, which means you're going to be able to be like a superhero in the technocratic dystopia timeline, okay? Okay. But bear in mind that those are going to be two coexisting timelines, existing on two different parallel realities when the bifurcation takes place. Right now, however, they are coexisting at the same time. And the bifurcation, from what I understand, is coming very soon. So <clears throat> it's best to be prepared. Who knows? Maybe if the Great Solar Flash is what's going to be hitting us this mid-September um, or in the next week or two, right? Perhaps that's going to be the bifurcation of the timelines. 
Sandy, thank you for the donation, sister. I have had some intense moments where to levitate or fly. No, I am not uh, on drugs and I am mentally stable. Uh, what do you make of this? There is nothing wrong with, with um, you know, trying to uh, attempt to levitate or fly. I mean, I've levitated a few times when I was deeply in the meditation. It happens naturally. However, I did scare the people that were around me because I converted my physical mass into a current of pure energy. And they, what, what I did is I, I disappeared from their range of reality, right? I, I shifted densities. And so, but I was in a state of high frequency. I think I went all the way to the 12th D or 13th D, guys, because I didn't feel my body anymore. And so all they saw was me disappear. So, of course, they were going to get scared. And then when I came back to my body, they were like, how did you do that? You know, like, I don't know. But to answer your question is, no, you know, there is nothing wrong with trying to fly. If you're already mastering levitation, keep pushing those abilities further, guys. This is the time to activate and cultivate our, our God innate divine abilities. Okay, guys, this is the time. Because, you know, in this new world, guys, it's going to be human 3.0. Okay, homo sapiens sapiens as we know them right, as mortals, uh, are not going to exist anymore, okay? And there's going to be different in-between alternative Earths, all right, where you're going to be able to, again, go from the positive Earth into these alternative Earths where perhaps, you know, some of the people got stuck and you're going to be able to act as a superhero to these other uh, alternative realities. But yes, in the timeline that is ascending, we're all going to be superhuman, all right, another question. Clementine, Clementine, Cooper. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you, thank you. All right, so Clementine wants to know, so grateful for you, Ishmael and Galactic Jedi team. Is it true that some elitish people descended from Anunnaki have six toes? Interesting. Well, I, I heard it was um, six fingers instead of five. But if you say, if you heard toes... You know, that's, that's pretty much the same thing, right? Six six fingers, six toes. Um, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, what, what we do know is that the Cabal families obviously come from the Anki lineage of, of the Nabu, of the Babylonian Nabu, Nabu bloodline, right? And they're not Jews, guys. They're not Zionists. They're Babylonian, Okay. You know, the Queen of England, right? The, the Windsors, they're all Babylonian, all right? Her, the, they actually changed their last name. It used to be a German last name, all right? To overthrow the descendants of King Arthur, who, who were the rightful heirs to the throne by virtue of being part of the lineage of, key, of King David, Jesus Mary Magdalene. They overthrew that lineage, right? Queen Elizabeth I, right? And then installed their, their German bloodline, which is traceable to Babylon, Okay. So um, I've never heard of the six fingers or the six. I mean, I've heard of the six fingers, never the six toes. Okay, Clementine. But who knows? You know, in the end, everything's going to be revealed. So I'm going to attempt to turn on my fan one last time because I am sweating. <laughs> there we go. Let's see how long that lasts. Okay. All right, so Just J, Just J, how you doing? Thank you for being here, and thank you for the donation. I'm confused about how Earth Terrans could be younger than Star Seeds. I thought all souls were eternal. Also, please use my donation to buy a better fan. <laughs> I will. I promise. I'm probably gonna get a bigger fan. Um, this was actually a gift from a friend. So, <laughs> the whole point is, hold on one second, guys. Okay, so to answer your question. The different, okay, yes, yes. All souls are pretty much individuated units of consciousness that come from the all pervading soul of the one infinite creator. So, in a sense, all souls are equal in that regard. However, when prime creator source decided to undergo expression, right, undergo division to express more of itself and explore more of itself, it uh, divided itself in two different categories. The, the first category was or the you could say the category number one were considered the descending souls this is the souls that come from the top down and this we could um 
include like the first family of creator gods, you know, the, the paradise trinity, the central race, uh, the order of the ancient of days, the archetypes, the archangels, the, the different uh, levels of angelics, um, the creator gods, of course, of universes. And then they had children. And so, uh, you know, that's the from the top down, right? Those are those are called the old souls because they pretty much have had the opportunity to experience everything in reality on every level, okay? Due to their to the fact that they are connected to the mind of the all, or they started from a level of reality where they were connected to the mind of the all. However, uh, the other group of prime creator source um, decided to play, not play the role, but decided to evolve from the bottom up, to lose all connection, all consciousness, all awareness of everything, all right, in order to start as a, you know, as a seed, a seed of consciousness, as a mineral, as an element first, I'm sorry. And then from an element, then it becomes a mineral. And then from a mineral, it becomes a plant or a tree. You, you get where I'm going. And then it evolves into the animal kingdom. And then from the animal kingdom into the primitive kingdom, the mammalian kingdom of the various Homo erectus. So that is the difference between star seeds and earth terrace. Okay. All right. So let's see. But yes, just to answer your question is we are all eternal by virtue of being fragments of the one, one universal mind or one universal spirit. Um. On our way home, thank you so much for the number one for the donation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, did I get to all of the, the super chat first? Okay. So now let me go back to answer random questions. Just want to make sure that I got to everyone there. All right. So I, I would like to point this out. Tamara. How you doing, Tamara? Tamara, I'm going to uh, put user in. No, he hi this. Use as a moderator. Pin message. Okay. I just pinned. Uh, Tamara's message. Tamara took my class, my Starseed Cosmology class, and she's been practicing what I taught her, the two different meditative techniques, and she's been getting results. You have that thank you. You know, it takes a lot of diligence and discipline to really, you know, develop some sort of a routine. Because some of these techniques, guys, you know, people could get lazy because it involves breathing, visualization, intonation. It involves, um, you know, um, all kinds of different things, all right? Seeing lights coming down, up, uh, being in control of your breath. And sometimes because there, there's so much so much that you have to employ in these meditations, you just get lazy. But if you don't get lazy and if you are religious about it and you put them into practice, then you start seeing results. So I'm so happy for you, Tamara, that you were able to, um, you know, see the results of these uh, techniques that I teach at the end of the third class. All right. Any other questions? All right. So somebody, okay, this is an interesting question. Do you know where Apollyon Abaddon is? Desired gone. Okay, so Apollyon. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys know the uh, Jesus Seuss connection, but Seuss was Jesus. Hey, Seuss, right? Hail Seuss. Jesus is the reincarnation of Seuss. Okay, so the reason why the Jews never believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the deliverer, was because they were expecting a godlike superhuman. Uh, descending from the sky with um, superpowers, similar to Thor, right? With thunder uh, and all that stuff. So they were expecting Apollo, the son of Zeus. But little do they know that <laughs> instead of, you know, getting Apollo, they got Jesus, Joshua. And Joshua, as you guys know, is the incarnating logos of our universe. It, at the highest level of reality, at the 12th dimension, uh, he's the equivalent of Michael, Lord Michael. So... The whole concept of the return of Apollyon Abaddon um, has to do with 
a direct descendant of Zeus, but you know, he already incarnated in the form of Joshua. And that's who they were all expecting, okay? Even the Roman Empire was expecting the incarnation of Apollo, the son of Zeus. And so they ended up getting Jesus instead, which was the incarnation of Zeus himself. All right, guys, food for thought. <laughs> uh, Jeanette, Jeanette Dean, thank you so much for the donation, sister. Are we making an EBS? Wait. Are we making an EBS to happen? Because we are all expecting it and waiting for it to happen. Big gratitude hugs. I, I think so. I think that the fact that uh, we are expecting and we are, you know, putting our attention and focus into this reality, um, we're actually manifesting it faster than normal. Yes. I'm so glad you pointed that out. And again, thank you for the donation, sister. So remember, guys. Wherever your attention is, that's where energy flows, okay? So you be the judge, all right? Just like how we have physical diets, right? Bodily diets, right? We are very, you know, when it comes to our health, we have to be picky as to what we put in our bodies. Um, it works It works the same way with the mind, you know? Just how we have physical diets, we have to have a mental diet, right? Be very, very picky as to where you choose to enter entertain your thoughts with. Or in. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Nick. Nick, gosh, thank you so much for the uh, donation, Nick. All right. Let's see. All right, so after today, guys, after today, I'm going to go live uh, Tuesday night or Wednesday. I'm not sure. I think Tuesday night. We'll do it Tuesday night, right, two days from now. Uh, and then I'm going to be off to Vegas. I'm going to be attending the Alien event, Biomet Expo. I'm going to be there for the whole weekend, actually. So I'm going to be probably uh, – I'm going to do my best to see if I could do a live while I'm there, okay? Um, perhaps if I am uh, – around Laura Eisenhower or some of these other truthers. So that way, you know, we could ask her questions and stuff. So we'll, we'll see. I'll probably surprise you guys one of these nights when I'm there over the weekend, this coming weekend. So yeah, just want to let you guys know that um, I'm going to be over at the alien event in Vegas at the Alexis resort and casino from the 14th to the uh, 17th, 17th. And I will be on every panel guys. I'm going to be on the alienation panel or the, uh, what is it called? The alien, um, <laughs> Alien something panel, right? I'm going to be on the secret space program panel. I'm going to be on the AI panel. And you better know on that AI panel, I am going to drop jewels like never before and educate some of these ignorant people that are so-called spiritual, right? And are promoting artificial intelligence. I mean, come on. How can, how can you call yourself spiritual and promote AI? It makes no sense. But I'm going to give them all a piece of my mind, guys. I'm going to try to record some of this stuff, too. So that way you guys can get the replay. Oh, look at this. I'm, I'm getting drenched here. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I got wet with the water hose. <laughs> Let's see. It's good because it's all sweat anyway. So I am purifying my body. Let's see. Any other questions? Okay. So now let me just take some general questions. Oh, by the way, my son was so glad that you guys prayed for him. Um, he even went ahead and he wrote out a comment on the last live, guys. So if you guys want to read his comment, I actually pinned it. That's my son, Maddox Perez. He was so happy. Let's see. Any good questions? Any good questions? We have 11 minutes left. So I'm going to try to just get some questions quick. Hi, Ishmael. Started seeing grid lines from the cosmic class in August in the in theta, theta state. I saw it first on you. Can you help me understand this? Okay, so you, you must be referring to when you took my class, my starseed cosmology class in August as a result of getting all that information right because that's what some of this cosmic information does guys 
it triggers us. It activates us, right? It opens up our pituitary, our pineal gland. So you're saying that as a result of taking my class this August, you started seeing grid lines from the cosmic class. Okay. Um, I don't know if I fully understand your question. Are you saying that you started seeing grid lines as you were taking my class in real time when I was talking and we were interacting or are you after the class, did you start seeing grid lines, you know, in your surroundings on your day to day basis? So I, I really don't understand your question, but it's it's normal. Right. Just like in the movie Lucy, when we start using more than 10 percent of our full mental power, we begin to see the binary, the binary coatings in all physical matter matter. You know, including people. We, if we walk on a street, uh, we could see everybody's binary codes. And a, in order to access all their information, guys, all right? So it is possible to do that. It is very possible to do that. I just noticed I have over 170, uh, 790 people on the chat. Wow, that is beautiful. Thank you so much for it. Oh, I almost forgot. If you guys could smash that like button, <laughs> that would be greatly appreciated. So if you guys could all hit the like button, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It helps. Okay, so let's get let's get to more questions here since we got 10 minutes. All right, so Jenny. Oh, no, Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy W., Brother Ishmael. As always, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. And thank you for your donation, brother. Let's see. I'm trying to answer more questions here. Does somebody know how to turn off the little um, some? Pop-up keeps coming up, and it's not letting me read your questions. All right. All right. There we go. Got it. I'm still learning how to use my laptop, guys. I still le- I'm still learning how to use these devices here. See, the thing is, where we come from, we don't need external technology, guys. We don't need it. All right? This is all a mimicking of the organic software that it lays dormant within our DNA. So... I wouldn't get too used to this technology because there's going to be a time coming up pretty quick, pretty soon now that you won't need it anymore. All right. So don't get used to this tech anymore. All right. Oh, there, there are all these good questions. I don't even know where to start. Uh, 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 Let's see. Okay. Uh, Catherine, Catherine Dunn says, Ishmael, have you seen inspired channel interview? John Nolan with David Icke on AI. I haven't. I haven't seen uh, any other interviews right now because I'm so busy working on my own stuff. But I, I do like David Icke. Uh, I, I've never heard of Jan John Nolan. Um, but yeah, I think David Icke has been doing his homework and definitely been in, informing us about the dangers of transhumanism and AI. You know, we are on the same camp when it comes to that. You know, the, the only thing uh, about uh, David Icke is that he doesn't really go deep into like who the allies of humanity are, who the you know positive races are. He only talks about reptilians, reptilians, reptilians and AI. But other than that, you know, he's doing his part. And I respect David Icke because he's been on this journey and in this disclosure movement for what, 40 plus years. I mean, the guy the guy is an OG. The guy is a veteran. You know, a shout a shout out out there to David Icke if he gets to see this video. You know, thank you for what you do, brother. And I know you started as a journalist back in the UK, but man, you really just, you you really kind of set the ball in motion for, for a lot of the stuff to come out, you know, in these days. So I just want to thank David Icke for doing his part. Uh, but no, I've never heard of John, John Nolan, never heard of him. You know what, what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll actually look it up to see the interview with John Nolan and David Icke and see and watch it myself. So I'll put it on my to-do list. All right. Promise. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 
All right, so this is a good question. Ishmael, do you think that people with multiple personalities are their avatars in one body? Uh, yes, that that could also be true. I, I think it's possible, guys, to have more than one um, soul in one body. Okay, it's happened. It's 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 known to happen, and um, I think I think there is truth to that. I think that there is some sort of a pre-contractual agreement between souls that when they incarnate, they they pretty much choose to incarnate in the same body and therefore have different personalities. Um, I've heard of that. All right, I've never met anyone personal though. All right, personally, who is you know, double, two souls, three souls in one body, but I'm sure that exists. Uh, I would say very few, though, very few. No, Cheryl, Cheryl Emmons, do not give away your blood, especially if you're RH negative. Don't give your precious blood away. No, no, no. I mean, if, you, if you're if you O negative, yes, you know, just, just do it because it is the universal donor and everyone can take your blood. It is the rarest blood out there. But I wouldn't just give your blood away, guys, because that's one way in which they uh, are able to uh, access your ancestry and who you are. All right. That's how, that's another way that they study um, or, or gather information from you. Oh, Ronnie. Ronnie Tra Trainer says, Ishmael Perez, uh, would you write an instruction manual on meditation? Uh, I've never have, but that's a great idea. You know, definitely something to consider. Uh, you teach in your classes. Yeah, that's definitely something to consider. I'm probably going to do that um, in my when I create a better website. All right. I'm going to try to put all my stuff and all my content in my website too, guys. And then, you know, if you guys want to access some of this stuff, you know, you guys are going to be able to go into my website for that. I'm working on, on bettering and modifying and upgrading my website, by the way. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, just reading your book. That, oh, so you said my book changed your life a hundred percent. Oh, brother. You know what? That is the reason why I keep going guys. That is the reason why I'm still here despite of whoever wants to, you know, put, put an end to me. Uh, I'm a fighter, you know, and I believe that, you know, my 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 book is actually positively affecting people's lives in a good way. So that to me, that feedback, brother, is a lot to me. You know, that, that to me is priceless. When people tell me about how my book has positively impacted their life um, makes me just want to keep going forward. And yes, there will be a part two, guys, in this next book. Everything's going to be explained in greater detail. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, I'm so glad you read my book and that it changed your life for the better, brother. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have uh, two minutes left. All right, a few more questions. Nancy Elliott, thank you so much for the uh, donation, Nancy Elliott. Appreciate that. I'm trying to get to a question. Everybody has in mind. Thank you so much for the love, guys. I see all the little red hearts going up. Or is it because you guys are smashing the like button? In either case, thank you. <laughs> is that what happens when you smash the like button? Little hearts go up? <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Ah, oh, you guys are amazing. This is like the greatest group of people I've ever met, you guys here online. And I can't wait to meet you guys in person. I think I've already met a few of you um, at the LA Conscious Live Expo, uh, perhaps in other conferences or tours that I've been on. But the day will come, guys, where we're all going to be working together as a team in the physical, in the flesh. 
Let's see. All right, I'm trying to look for a question. We are at the hour, but I'm going to answer one more good question before I exit, guys. And then I'm going to take my shirt off and jump in the cold shower. Let's see. Okay, so a lot of the stuff that I'm reading, uh, they're not really questions. They're just kind of, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. So I guess I'm going to end. Uh, yeah, I don't see any other questions. I'm going to end today's live. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I love the chat, by the way. You guys are extremely intelligent. You know, like attracts like. You guys are the most intellectual crowd I've ever interacted with. All right, so I guess I am going to end my life because I don't see any questions other than your comments and your chit chat. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, guys, at this point, I think I am going to exit and I will see you guys. Oh, wait, well, uh, here are the questions. Questions coming in. Well, teenagers, young adults make the shift that are hooked with technology. He wants to know Vanessa. And the answer to that is uh, it depends on their contract. It depends on who they are. Um, if they are star seeds, uh, chances are that um, – let me see. If they're teenagers and they're hooked on video games, God, you know, that's the thing because that's how these technocrats – you know, uh, sway people into the AI timeline through uh, tech addiction. So to answer your question, I don't think so. I don't know. So it's best that you start restricting your kids, your teenagers. If you guys have teenagers, take away their devices, all right? Don't let them spend six to eight hours a day or even four or three hours a day, you know, on their little devices. They, you know, have them go do something interact with people, go on a nature walk, uh, something that's going to engage their natural creativity. All right. So with that have said, I just wanted to thank everyone for being here once again. Thank you so much. Galactic Jedi. I was told that Galactic Jedi is plural for Jedis. So I'm just going to say Galactic Jedis, Galactic Jedi to each and every single one of you for being here. And I will see you guys in two nights. All right, guys. Have a beautiful evening. May the God Force, may the God Force be with each and every single one of you guys. And be patient. Our time is coming soon to rise, guys. For we are going to be the guardians of not only the new earth, but of the entire multiverse. Uh, let's see. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, cool. You guys are awesome. Nancy. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you for the donations, and Nancy. Bye.